Welcome back to Gabversity, friends of mathematicians and mathematics, lovers of mathematics. I shall hereby address you as Mathophilus. Let's look at some introductory analysis. And here is a question off the web. It has a small solution, but I'm going to give you a very big, full, comprehensive one with some pictures. Given finitely many countable sets. Okay? Finitely many countable sets. So, A1 all the way to AN. But it's not infinity, it's just up to some number. Show that all of the union of all of these countable sets... And these are two different questions. So first we're going to show that this one is countable. So if we have all of these individual countable sets, which means, as we know, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to infinity, it can be counted. The real numbers cannot be counted. If you're not sure, go look up countable and uncountable on YouTube, on right where we are. We're going to show that the union is also countable. Let's begin. The first thing we're going to need is subproof one. We're going to need two subproofs and the axiom of choice. So I'll talk about those three. Let's do it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to let this new set A equal all right, A n. So the set includes A n, which is A 1, A 2, A 3, A 4. N is the element of the natural numbers. And then, lo and behold, we have another set called B, which has B. B 1, B 2, B 3, n element of the natural numbers. What are we going to do with them? We're going to use them to make this series. And this series is going to consist of what? It's going to be A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3. So every odd one is going to be A, uh, what do you call it, A, and every even one is going to be B. All right? We're going to say that as we just said, this is now a mathematical version, C2K, so all the even Cs is going to be represented by B, and all the odd Cs is going to be represented by A for all K element of the natural numbers. We can remember here that A1, that's going to be C3. So we're going to need a, a zero here, of course. Don't forget that little extra thing. So this, of course, is going to imply that the A union with B, because the odd versions of this series and the even versions of this series together is going to make the whole series. Now, I said is, I meant to say are going to make the whole series. And there is the whole series, and that is C1, C2, C3, C4. Well, guess what? C1, C2, C3, C4, well, that means that this one and this one union together, even though they're both countable, because that's A1, A2, A3, and that's B1, B2, B3, you put them together, and they still make a C1, C2, C3, and then you get that. Isn't that interesting? What does that mean? Well, isn't that weird that you can add two infinities and still get a one-to-one -one mapping with another infinity? Well, we're going to bring up the axiom of choice, but there's an easy way to look at this at the moment. That's like saying, for example, you could get a1 plus b1 and make that c1 and then the next number would be a2 plus b2 and that would be c2 and that would go on forever so you can see how even if each one of these goes to infinity and each one of these goes to infinity together it makes a new number and that goes to infinity so the size if that makes any sense is still uh, well not the size but let's call it the power or the cardinality let's call it that is the same all right now we've only done this for two sets but it's just very easy to do it for three sets because all you have to do is then say well let's have three sets that add up to c1 let's have four sets five sets you can have infinite amount of sets that add up to one term the next infinite add up to the next term so you can do this via induction for an infinite amount of sets if you haven't done induction then go back look up induction and come back to this video the next subproof we're going to need for this question is that n by n, Cartesian coordinates n by n, is equinumerous to n itself. What does that mean? If, that means if we get the natural numbers this way and the natural numbers this way, they will still have the same amount of, or they'll be countable, in exactly the same one-to-one -one ratio as the natural numbers in one direction. Now, how do we prove that? Well, we can prove it via a picture. Let me show you this. This is the n going that way, and that's the n going that way. That's n by n. And we can actually cover all of the points on this massive two-dimensional grid using one line that bends around, and it goes like this. It starts off like that, and it keeps going out. And what you'll find is that if you do that forever, you'll actually cover every single point, which is quite amazing. And you can see it because you can go all the way to that edge, come back to this edge, go to that edge, come back to this edge, and you can keep doing it forever. And that long line can be pulled out into a straight line and mapped one-to-one -one onto n. And so that's how you get n by n 
is onto with n. Isn't that amazing? And we're going to need these two things. And lastly, we're going to need the axiom of choice. Axiom of choice, if you want to know more information, just type in axiom of choice on YouTube. But basically what it means is that, well, one of the consequences is that you can get something that's infinite, something else that's infinite, put them together, and it's still the same amount of infinity, which is sort of weird. Because if you look at it the other way, you can get one length of infinity and then turn it into two, north and east, if you want to call it that way. Now, that's not exactly what axiom of choice is. That's a consequence of the axiom of choice. And that is a bit of a, bit of a mind-bending thing. There's another one where you could sort of take a sphere, cut it all up, and then put it back together, and it will make two spheres. And you'll find that if you go on YouTube, and uh, I think it's called the Banky or the Bansky Paradox. I always forget how to spell it. Anyway... So now we want to show that the union of all these sets up to some given number n is countable. In other words, this thing together makes a new set that is also countable. All right, how do we do that? Well, we just showed you how A union with B is a bijection one to one. Just showed it here, right? A union with B is still a bijection with n. Right? In other words, it's countable in the same way that A on its own is countable and B on its own is countable. We showed that, and by induction, you can keep extending this forever, as you can do on your own. So, how do we put on the brakes and say, well, with any number, this will work? So there could be a million sets, a billion sets. How do we know that it's always going to be the case? Well, let's do it. What we do is we say that there is a set bigger than this last set, and it's empty. And in other words, any number bigger than n, the set is empty. They're all empty. And when we've already done this ages ago, but you can look this up. If you add up empty sets, you get an empty set. All right, so that means that we can limit this. All of a sudden, this n can be limited by the fact that you assume that whatever n is, there's one bigger that's an empty set. Now, that's a pretty awesome and powerful technique. You might think that means nothing. But how else would you know how big you can go with n? Well, this means that you can go whatever size you want with n as long as the next one is empty. That's pretty awesome. That means it's a finite set, but you don't know how big the set is of all of these unions of smaller sets or subsets. And so that means all of a sudden that this simplifies very quickly. Now we know that this actually has a certain size. And because it has a certain size, then we can just go back to the proof where we showed A union with B, and that can keep happening. A union with B, A union with C, and C is countable. So if that's countable, that's countable, and everything between is countable, the whole set is going to be countable. Now, if you haven't studied abstract mathematics, this might seem tedious, but proofs are unbelievably important. Because just because you can add two or three or four or five or a million sets, it doesn't mean a million and one is going to work. You need to prove it. So does, now it doesn't matter. It could be a million and one or a billion and one. As long as the next one is now empty, that means that that is all that there is and makes that countable. Because if there was one next to it that we didn't add but was still there, well, it might not be. You don't know. Obviously it is, but you don't know. All right. Now, let's write the notation for this set. You ready? Universal union, n element of natural numbers for a n. So it's all of them, all together. It's one, two, three, four, all of these put together. It's now here. So that one was the easy one. Now, what we're going to show is that this one, the set, countable set, multiplied by the next one, multiplied by the next one, multiplied by the next one. So not, addi not addition, but multiplication. And this requires multi-dimensions. And we're going to show that that's also countable. Now, if you remember, if we have one set times the other set, that's sort of like saying, sort of like saying, because that's, that's compared to n, and that's also compared to n, so that's times, and th the set of natural numbers, in other words, countable and countable. And what we want to show is that that is equinumerous with just n. And we did that already, and we're going to do it again. But what we want to do is show it all the way up to any given n. So not just two dimensions, but three, four, five, six dimensions we can't see with our own eyes. In other words, n to the nth dimension is equinumerous or equivalent, same cardinality, also finite, countable, or not finite, it could be infinite, but it's countable in the same way that n is countable. All right, we can match up the steps. Now, let's do it. It's pretty easy in two dimensions. You know, let's say you take... Uh, you know, each position on a grid, each two-dimensional position, and make that a point. And you can align that with one point from one, two, three, all the way to infinity. But let's show it with as many dimensions, an arbitrary dimension. All right, let's do it via induction. So let's say 
n to the n minus 1 times n is going to equal n to the n. And that's just pretty simple. That's simple mathematics. n minus 1, then you add the n back, you get n to the n. So let's say that 4, for n equals 1, then that's just n to the 0 by n, and that's just going to be n equals n. So that's pretty simple. Now let's say for n equals 2, then we're going to say, well, n squared, so n2 minus 1, which is n, by n equals n squared. Okay, well, that seems pretty standard. Alrighty, we're back where we started. So, what did we say? We said that this n squared, okay, which is n squared, which is n by n, is equinumerous or equivalent to just n. Well, if that's the case, then that is just equivalent, as we said, to n. Well, if that's the case, then n cubed is just going to be n squared by n. But we know that this is equivalent to n in terms of its numbers within the set, infinite and countable. So that's the same in terms of countable as that by that. So it doesn't matter how high you go, you can keep doing this and you'll end up getting that by that. But we know that that by that is also equivalent to that. And so by doing this onto infinity, using the process of induction, we get this, what we just did on the other page, which is n to the nth dimension is equinumerous to the dimension minus 1 times the dimension, which we were just doing. So we said, for example, n squared is the same as n by n, or n cubed is the same as the n squared by n, same thing. And we already proved that this is the same as saying that by that in terms of its cardinality, in terms of its countability, let's just say. So you can map these one to one, as we've done before. And then obviously because we can then take this, this is a two-dimensional uh, you know, set all the way to infinity, and that is the same countability as a one-dimensional set all the way to infinity. So what have we showed? Well, we've showed that this n to any nth power is equivalent to n in one dimension which is very strange, because you would think that in one dimension, this would have a smaller number of infinities than this. But no, they have the same number of infinities based upon the axiom of choice. Sorry, the same number of infinite elements in the set is what I meant to say. So the amount of elements in this set is the same as the amount of elements in this set. The elements here are just multidimensional. Here it's one dimensional. That's all it is. And that's called the axiom of choice. And so it implies that n to the n is equinumerous to that, and that's how we showed that a1 by a2 by a3 by a4 all the way up to an is countable if each one of the sets is countable. So n1 by n2 by n3, they're all countable. Then it's the same as that in terms of its countability, and we have completed the proof. Congratulations, everybody.